two, and everybody who's ready for a bounce back said, amen. Today is one of the most special days in the world to me as a pastor because I get a chance to give you a word that I believe can catapult you into a new season. Certain things you don't have to play about and certain things I don't play about. I take today serious. This, in my opinion, is the Super Bowl of church right here. I wake up fully excited and motivated to speak. Truth be told, didn't even go home or to bed last night. I was at the church in my office writing and reading and taking stuff out and putting stuff in and rehearsing it in my head. Looked up, it was about 520 something this morning, went home, took a shower, put on my Easter shirt and came here with y'all. I'm pumped today. I'm pumped today. You can feel it. I'm pumped today. Why? Because today I don't have to tell you how cool you are. Today I don't have to talk about your haters. I get to talk about a man named Jesus. And today, I know I'm going to get my praise on. Forget you and your neighbor. If you don't shout, that's good for you. I planned on shouting today. Didn't even wear church shoes, wore tennis shoes, because I planned, who else with me, on shouting today. But before we give God our best praise, I got to give you something to shout about. Because God doesn't mind our celebration. It's a problem when we have celebration isolated from substance. And before we celebrate, let me give you some substance. Please to introduce to you something called the principle of exception. The principle of exception. Dr. Daniels calls the principle of exception a person or thing that is excluded from a general statement or does not follow a rule. The principle of exception is a person or thing that is excluded from a general statement or does not follow a rule. An exception is a special case. God wants us and he sees us as an exception. We know he sees us as an exception because when he talks about us, he uses words that don't make sense to ordinary people. He uses words like light, salt, Royal. Here's one that should get you excited. Peculiar. The principal exception means what happens with them doesn't dictate or determine what happens with me. What happens with them does not dictate or determine what happens with me. The principle of exception doesn't mean we won't experience what other people experience. It means we won't have the same outcome that other people had. Why, Pastor Mike? Because you are the exception. Exodus chapter 8 verse 23 says, I will make a clear distinction between my people and your people. Exodus 10, 21 and 23 says, the Lord said to Moses, lift your hand toward heaven. And the land of Egypt will be covered with a darkness so thick you can feel it. So Moses lifted his hand to the sky and a deep darkness covered the entire land. A deep darkness covered the entire land of Egypt. I'm going to say it again. A deep darkness covered the entire land of Egypt for three days. During all that time, it was so dark. People could not even see each other. And because they could not see each other, nobody moved. Here's where you come in. But there was a light, as usual, where the people of Israel lived. Only seven of y'all going to catch this and the rest of y'all can just watch us. This is the last year of my life where I dim my light so other people can feel comfortable. I'm not bougie, I'm not arrogant, I'm not stuck up. But if my light offend you, that's between you and the light giver. But in 2023, seven of y'all gonna catch it, let your light shine. If you ain't comfortable around me, find a new friend. But I'm done acting like I am not who I am. So you can be comfortable with who you lie to tell yourself you are. I am the head. 
not the tail. I am above and not beneath. As a matter of fact, if you knew like I knew, you would hang closer to me because everybody who stays close to me, the favor just rubs off on them. It's only 10 folk in this crowded arena who can feel me, but 70 of y'all sung this song when you was little and you thought it was cute. Now it's your theme song, This Little Light. I'm a priest to this side, they sleep over there. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Can I ask you a question? Why you mad about my light when I told you it was just a little light? What you gonna do when God really turned me up this year? I'm not preaching to everybody, but I wish I had a hundred light folk. Think about it. You've been saying it all year and didn't realize you were saying. You would say, oh yeah, that's lit. Which means every place in my life that used to be dark, God's turning the light up. This is why when you walk in rooms, people can't handle you before you even say or do something. It's because you shine into I wish I had somebody in each section who would just testify I am the light. I don't care how dark my family used to be, when I show up, it's time to turn the light on. I'm getting ready to break every generational curse, every generational lie. If we didn't have no money before me, I speak we gonna have it after me. I need a thousand folk to jump up and shout, let your light. I feel God in here today. Look at your neighbor and say, shine your light, shine your light. Tell them, shine your light, shine your light. Tell them, shine your light, shine your light. Be who God called you to be. Walk in the favor he called you. Why? This is a word for 10 folk. You are the exception. Y'all didn't shout. You missed it. You, my monitor, are the exception. Make that make sense, PMJ. We may go through the same stuff. But because I am the exception, I may go through what you go through, but I don't come out how you come out. Pastor Mike, that ain't biblical. Put scripture on it. When people get thrown in fiery furnaces, they normally get burned and consumed. But when the three, blue hard, three Hebrew boys went in, they walked out because God made them the exception. When people get thrown in lion's den, they normally get eaten alive. But when it comes to Daniel, God made him the exception. Water don't part, but when Moses stood in front of it, God made him the exception. Walls don't fall just because you give God praise. Everybody else got to work to knock a wall down. But when it came to Joshua, the wall came tumbling down because God made him all right, people don't walk on water. But when Jesus took two steps, he was the exception. Women don't get pregnant at 90. But when it comes to Sarah, God. People don't get the house they want with bad credit. But when it comes to you, God's about to make you. People need 20 years of experience to get the job you want. But when it comes to you, you got to make this much money to get this much stuff. But when it comes to you, your neighbor didn't shout, so tell them you ain't got to receive that. But for everybody who can claim I am the exception, you ought to jump up and start, I receive that. Yeah. I, Michael, am the exception. And this... This is not a statement of arrogance, but affirmation. I'm by myself right here, and I'm only, this gonna be my section right here, cause I don't know what they tripping on over there. I'm not saying I'm better than you. I'm just saying I'm different than you. I'm a priest to y'all, they sleep over there. I'm not saying I'm better than you. I'm just saying I'm different than you. That's only for six of y'all who've been wrestling lately trying to figure out what's wrong with you because the harder you try to fit in, the worse stuff start happening. Baby, this ain't your season to fit in. Here go two words for you, I'm different. If I gotta go by myself, I'll go by myself. I'm different. I'm the type of different that'll pray for something, shout before it happened, then when it happened, praise God all over. 
Uh-uh. And I got an announcement for about a thousand people who will receive it. God put this on my heart for just for you. God's getting ready to break a rule for you. Y'all miss what I just said. I see you up there. Y'all caught that. God's getting ready to break a rule for you. That the stuff you've been praying for, according to the rules, you shouldn't get it. But I speak, God's giving you something that money can't buy. It's certain words you can't say in church or a riot may break loose. And the word I'm getting ready to shout is God's giving you favor. Oh my God, you sitting in here today like your degree did it. You sitting in here today like your savings did it. Truth be told, you are one layoff away from being right back to where you used to be. But I wish I had a thousand folk who can shout, it was nothing but God. I speak favor. Yeah. When we tiptoe into the corridors of today's text, we find a brother who's going through pain, but he's also in purpose. And sadly, when it comes to Resurrection Weekend, so many people focus on the eschatological impact that they overshadow his existential reality. Eschatological, that comes from the word eschatology. Eschatology, study of the end time. That's the book of Revelation. What will happen in the end? So what happens on Resurrection Weekend, we focus on the eschatological impact, the eschatological logical impact is salvation we are so excited because when he got up that means we can get up so we get something called salvation but my problem with the church is that we are so focused on the eschatological impact that we breeze past the existential reality or in other words we highlight the salvation but we speed past the suffering you so ready to have a praise break to shout he got up that you overlook the fact that he went down. All right, I know everybody ain't gonna shout about this. Everybody who winning ought to throw your hand up right there. Because here's what people don't understand. Yes, I'm winning. But we ain't gonna act like I didn't go through a season of suffering. All right, I got 10 people right here. Three people over there. Can I preach to three people who can shout, yes, I'm up. But if you would have been with me when I was... We so ready to get him up. We so ready to shout about Sunday that we ignore they marched him from judgment hall to judgment hall, Michael. But he never said a mumbling. That, that, see, it ain't the fact that he didn't say a word. Because there are seasons of my life where I may not have said a word. But underneath my breath, I cussed out about 10 people. Oh, you're going to be fake today, huh? But the scripture says he never, I'm going to have church by myself, said a mumbling word because he knew why would I respond to you like what you do actually determines the outcome of who I am. That's for six of y'all who got seven ignorant friends telling you you ain't going to say nothing back. For what? If I acknowledge you, I just made you. I, I, I don't know. I'm going to have church by myself today. <laughs> he never said a mumbling word. And then all of a sudden, he gets to Friday. And this is what we call Good Friday. This is crazy. This is crazy. We call it Michael Good Friday. <laughs> we call it <laughs> Good Friday. Don't that sound cute? We call it Good Friday. Can I free you? It ain't Good Friday until Sunday. Friday wasn't good Friday. Y'all sleep. Friday wasn't good Friday. Friday was ugly. Friday was dark. They beaten him to the point his mama don't recognize him. All the disciples done abandoned him. His homeboy done betrayed him. He on a cross dying. And you gonna call it Good Friday. And the only reason you call it Good Friday, because you saw what he did Sunday. And I got a sneaky suspicion, seven of y'all frustrated, because folk keep looking over your life, thinking you got where you are without some scars. I'm going to say this, and only five of y'all going to catch this. If you only knew what it took for some of us to be who we are, that's why you can't figure out why folks jealous of you. Baby, I would trade with you tomorrow. Half of the stuff I got, I didn't even ask for it. But God blessed me in... 
I know you're ready to have church. I know you're ready to have church. I know you're ready to have church. You're ready for me to say, but he got up. But can I free you? Before we shout about him getting up, sometimes you got to appreciate the down. <laughs> I'm preaching to six of y'all. If I said who wanted a million dollars, y'all would have took out running. But I need somebody to shout, I thank God for my broke seasons. Being broke taught me more about myself than anything I ever had. I learned how to bargain. I learned how to save. I learned how to make nothing into something. I know you want a whole lot of money, but I thank God for my down season. I know you got a good family now. Y'all got all got haircuts. Your children look good. You got on new clothes. But I thank God for six of my crazy exes. Because they taught me how to pray and taught me how to be who God called me to be. I'm finna catch three of y'all. Anybody can shout for up. But who's crazy enough to take 10 seconds to say, God, I thank you for my downs? Oh, hear me, hear me. That's why, that's why I love gospel music. But I told James we might have to start writing new songs because too much of our music is up music. Up music talks about what God's going to do. Up music talks about where you are right now. Grandmama and them didn't sing up music. <laughs> they sung down music. They would sing some, I am a living testament. I should have been dead and gone. Watch this. But Lord, you let me live on. See, I need a song that's going to tell me, yes, I'm going through hell right now. But if I just hold. Yeah, we suffer. And as we tiptoe into the corridors of today's text, we find ourselves situated and acculturated. And Jesus is being crucified. That breaks my heart because he's being crucified. It's a Friday and he's being crucified to the point where it is unbearable. But my problem is not the fact that he's being crucified. My problem is the fact that just a couple days earlier, everybody's shouting, Hosanna. Michael, everybody's shouting, Hosanna. Please put this in your notes. Be careful who shouts with you now. Yeah. I'm just watch this. God's getting ready to bless you. Be careful who high five you when you talk about it. Put this in your notes because people will shout when it's prophesied, then kill you when it manifests. I'm preaching if you'll receive that. No, don't high five me when I say we both coming out. I want to know if I come out before you come out, will you try to take me out? I think you messed around and sat next to a hater. Can you reach over that hater and hop up another neighbor and tell him if God do it for you before he do it for me, I'm not going to hate on you. I'm going to shout for you like he was doing it for me. Because I know if God did it for you, it's only a matter of time before he do it. Hear me. I, I was getting ready to preach. I was getting ready to preach. I'm getting ready to preach. And last week, Lachey, she's from Atlanta. She's a part of our ministry. She's from, she from Atlanta. She sung, uh, she sung a solo last week at our church, right, for every mountain. And she tore it up, right? Girl took us in, wiped us out. She was by herself last week because her husband's going through kidney failure. And literally, she's like, Pastor, he couldn't make the trip. He's weak. He, uh, we, we, we don't know what's going on. I'm getting ready to walk out here today, right? She sends me a text. I need you praying. I, I said, why? She said, we headed out of town. I said, girl, it's Easter. Why are you not singing at your church? She sent me a screenshot. It's crazy. Screenshot says, hey, good morning. No, it's 2 a.m., but we found you a kidney. How soon can you get here? <laughs> oh, my God. Y'all missed it. I should have put the text message on the screen. All right? All right, so now I'm screaming. I'm in the back screaming, and one of my people was like, why are you screaming? You don't even really know him. I said, I don't know him at all, but I know Rod. Y'all miss what I just said? And I said, God, if you can do it for her husband, you can do it for my friend. See, some of y'all only shout for what you need God to do in your life. But I wonder what would happen if 4,000 people would shout on one accord like God is getting ready to happen. I just need you to grab somebody close to you and shout whatever you believe in God for. I speak it's already done. Whatever you're praying for, I shout it's already done. 
Whatever your children need, it's already done. Whatever promotion you're waiting on, it's already done. Whatever healing you're waiting on, it's already done. It's already done. Be careful. What if, can I ask you a question? What if God blessed the people in your vicinity because he was trying to see if your posture would change if he didn't call your name? Michael! I don't know who believe in God for somewhere to live this year. Every now and then, you wanna know what the secret is? You need to find somebody who's done or gotten what you believe in God for. Y'all miss what I just said? You might want to put this in your notes. Sometimes God hides who you will be inside of a person in front of you. You miss what I just said. Sometimes God hides who you can be inside of somebody else, which is why you can't walk around bitter. Because what if you're looking at what you're going to become? And some of y'all going to miss your breakthrough because you hating on what you could be learning from. Did you hear what I just said? I need somebody in this section over here who done already closed on your house and already moved in to just bust a 360 and say, I'll be the example. Look at her right there. I need somebody in this section who's already been healed to bust a 360. So we can, I need somebody with a good marriage to just bust. I need somebody who kids graduated from college. I wish I had a thousand folk who would bust a 360 and shout, I am the evidence that God is still in the blessing business. I'm the evidence that he'll reach way down and pick you up. I'm the evidence. With no money, you can still start your business. I am! Somebody shout, I'm the evidence. You better say it like you mean it. Shout, I am the evidence. Hold, hold on, hold on. I am the what? I am the what? If you have your Bibles, go to CSI chapter 1 verse 2. In CSI chapter 1 verse 2, doom, doom. They taught me, doom, doom, a very important lesson, doom, doom, that whenever they get on a crime scene, doom, doom, the first thing they say is, what do we got here? Then somebody walks up and says, we got two victims laying on the ground. Looks like it's a breaking and entry. We don't see anything going on. We're going to dust for fingerprints. Then out of nowhere, one detective always walks in and says, what's that right there? It's three cups, but it's only two people, which means it was a third person. And then some ignorant person to reach is help. Get some gloves. Because when you see evidence, you don't treat it any kind of way. When people ask why you cut them off, tell them it's because you got to be delicate with evidence. You're not going to be treating me like I'm not the key that can show you the possibilities of what God called me to be. Somebody ought to jump up and shout, I am the evidence. You wanna know what I discovered? I used to say stuff like, when I make it, it's certain people ain't going around no more. Holy Spirit told me two weeks ago, no, they need to see you. No, no you ain't glowing. You ain't being arrogant. But you don't know what they faith look like. One of them gonna hate. But then one of them gonna be like, that right there. I need three haters who can say, God, I ain't hating it. Whatever you did for them. I, I'm, finna, I, I'm trying not to be ghetto. Pray for me. Have you ever been at a restaurant and you get ready to order you some food and you don't have a clue what you want? Then somebody walk by with something. Then you be like, hey, hey what, what's, what's that right there? 
They be like, oh, that's a glazed chicken with a sauce or such a, mm, let me get that right there. Yeah, seven of y'all ought to look down your row and shout, yeah, I saw what you pulled up in. God, let me get that right there. I see how happy y'all look sitting there. Lord, let me get that right there. I dare you to do an inventory of your circle and say, oh, God, I see how good you been. I just need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus being crucified. And bro, he's literally the evidence. And they crucify him. And they march him from judgment hall to judgment hall. They beat him with a cat of nine tails. That cat of nine tails is so powerful that there are nails attached to the end of it. Spikes are attached to the end of it. Every time Mike, they hit him, the nail went into his skin, Mace, and it would rip his flesh out. So imagine every time, boom, it hit him, it stuck to his body. And they would just, boom, take a flesh, piece of flesh with him. That's why people need to be more sensitive with you. Because some of you have been through so much stuff that they don't realize, yes, I survived. But I don't know what it took out of me. Ooh, I don't know who I'm preaching to right there. And your problem is you make it look so easy. You walk around like don't nothing bother you. You walk around with a demeanor that says I'm good by myself. Have you ever stopped to consider the strongest people you have to sometimes baby the most? Because they've been through so much pain and so much ridicule and so much rejection. Every time they hit them took a piece of flesh with him every time so it wasn't just the impact that alone hurts it's the impact then what it took yeah. and imagine what a paper cut feels like imagine somebody putting a cat of nine tails or thorns or literally knives and hooks in your skin and ripping it out Every and to put a point where every time they hit you, your back's opening and your back's breaking, and they whoop his back. I got to pause and parenthetically digress because I was praying last night and said, God, why did they whoop his back first? He said, Mike, because the first thing I'm trying to get rid of is your past. Uh, he says he hits him and yow, hit him in the back, uh, and they take a piece of flesh. They hit him in the back mm, and take a piece of flesh. But the scripture says, don't feel sorry for him because he was wounded uh, for your transgressions, bruised mm, for your iniquities. The chastisement of peace was placed upon them, Michael, and by his stripes, you are healed. And I don't know who came to church on Easter weekend who's going through any type of sickness. And I'm going to say this, and only seven of y'all going to feel me. All sickness ain't physical. Michael, cancer ain't the only type of sickness. Diabetes ain't the only type of sickness. COVID ain't the only type of sickness. For some of us, our finances is sick. For some of us, emotionally, we're sick. For some of us, relationally, we're sick. God said, whatever brings you, put this word together, dis-ease. Did you catch what I just said? I didn't say disease. Break the word. Whatever brings you dis-ease. Whatever removes the ease out of your walk becomes a dis-ease. And he says, whatever causes dis-ease, I am the cure. Michael. And Jesus is going through. He's getting marched from Judgment Hall to Judgment Hall, but he never... Mm, I'm trying to be dignified. I said I wasn't going to act churchy because I got so many people who come to church and don't be liking all that church stuff, but I'm Baptist. Y'all got to pray for me. I'm about to have a Baptist fit, and I'm trying to be dignified. He never, Michael, said a mumbling word, but I see where something shifts because when we get to verse 41, they start mocking him. They get him on the cross, and the scripture says, it's on the screen, the leading priests, the teachers of religious law, and the elders also mock Jesus. Verse 42, look at what it says. He saved others, they scoff, but he can't even save himself. So who, he is the king of Israel, is he? Let him, Michael, come down. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but 70 of y'all, this is your word for this whole summer. I don't care what people do to you. You got to always remember that the goal ain't to kill you. The goal is to get you to come down. 
I'm too focused this year. I can't be arguing with people who satisfied where they are. I can't. You ought to put that in your phone. Come down. That ought to be your post Monday when you wake up. I apologize for whatever I was in last week and the year before that. But as of this morning, Michael, I can't come down. I'm trying to get this degree. I can't come down. No, I see that if I, if I ever lock in on my finances, I can have something. So I, I'm sorry, I can't go out with y'all this week. We can't do this every weekend. We can't go to work Monday through Thursday, barely get paid what we worth. Then Friday go out, Saturday go out, Sunday wake up, stream PMJ, and Monday restruggle. The devil is a liar. I can't come down. Yes, you are fine, girl. You built exactly like I like you. You got everything I would ever want. Boy, you see what this is? You a tall, chocolate, some somebody. And the 2023 me would have took you all down through there. But the 2024 me can't come down. I, I just can't come down. That's why if you came with your friend, if you came with a family member, that's why you should have bumped them and said, you need to hold me to that. Because I tend to lose focus. I tend to drift left. I just need one person in my life that when you see me getting ready to slip, hey, 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 can't come down. I see D, I see D, I can't come down. If you really Jesus, save yourself. Can I free you? Please put this in your notes. One of the greatest battles that God often fights with you is with you. Please put that in your phone. One of some of the greatest battles that God sometimes fight with you, it's with you. They tell Jesus, save yourself. Some of y'all still stuck because you keep trying to save yourself. God is in heaven like you know I can fix that, but I ain't going to fix it till you tag me in. I'm finna run. I, I'm trying to be dignified. No, no, no. Have you ever been watching wrestling? And I'm a wrestler. Do you ever been watching wrestling and somebody getting beat up? Fellas, and they keep getting beat up. And the partner is on the outside shaking the ropes. Like, come on. Here's what I love about a good tag team. In order to motivate his tag partner, he looks at the crowd, tells the crowd to keep cheering. And this dude's get his head beat in. And out of nowhere, Michael. He gets enough strength to die and tag his partner. And God keeps telling me, Mike, if they ever tag me, I could have been fixed a family. I'm preaching if you're receiving. I could have been fixed that problem. Pastor Mike, they so busy looking for a hookup that they don't realize I could have just gave them favor. You looking for somebody on the ground who could fix it with just a little talk with Jesus. I, I, if, Michael, if, if, are y'all, am I doing okay? All right. He says, if you're the son of God, save yourself. This is critical. And look at the next verse, verse 43. Verse 43 said, he trusted God, so let God rescue him now. Not only are they mocking Jesus, now they start mocking God. Once they start mocking God, I see a shift. Because the next verse says, and I pray you can handle this, even the revolutionaries who were crucified mocked him. Verse 45, look at what it says. At noon, I'm finna run. Darkness fell across the whole land, watch this, until 3 o'clock. You missed it. You, you missed your shout. 9 o'clock, that's what grandmama come to service. She told the whole church up at 9 o'clock off this right here. As long as they was beating them, nothing happened. As long as they was beating him, nothing happened. But the moment they started mocking him like he ain't who God said he was, the atmosphere shifted. It went from light to dark. Y'all miss what, what, what I just said. It went from light, all right? all right? B. Brian, I don't know if I could do this and I didn't plan this, but, but B. Brian, I, I don't think they get the picture. Right, so as long as they was hitting him, we got light. As long as they marched from Judgment Hall to Judgment Hall, we got light. But the moment B, they mocked them. Yeah, light started going out. The moment they began to talk about them, stuff 
started shifting. The moment they began to mock what he used to be, the atmosphere be started shifting. The moment they began to hate on his assignment, stuff started shifting. Only a hundred y'all gonna jump up with me. You don't got to like me. You ain't got to hang with me. You ain't got to be around me, but you better keep your mouth off me. Bring the light back. I don't know who I'm preaching to. You ain't got to hang with me. You ain't got to like me, but the moment you put your mouth on me, God will make stuff start. That's why the scripture says, touch not my anointing and do my prophet. That's why all my single folk, they're going to try to come back in about six weeks. Nah, tell them, stay where you at. Because they thought when they left, they was going to be fine. They didn't realize when they left, all the favor stayed with you. Now out of nowhere, stuff shifting, cars breaking down, folk letting them go off jobs, hair ain't growing right, edges falling out, beards start getting patchy. Out of nowhere, they want to call. I, it was, I just want to let you know I look. No, go love me, the Lord. Watch between me and thee. Why we're absent. The last thing you should have done was pitch. Hear me. It's dark. It's dark. Can you please put this in your notes? I only got seven minutes left. Can you put this in your notes? Darkness biblically represents judgment. That's critical. Darkness biblically represents judgment. You remember when God was getting ready to judge Pharaoh and all his people? He tells Moses, tell Pharaoh a plague is coming. When the plague comes, he says, darkness covered the whole earth. And death went from house to house. Oh, my God. But every house, Michael that had blood on the doorpost. Michael, death mm, had to skip over. I, I, I don't know who I'm preaching to it here, but I, I just want to shout and praise God for the stuff that passed over me. You can sit in here and be bougie all you want to be, but is there anybody who can look back over your life and it's three times you can say, God, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be who I am right now. It's some stuff that passed. Pulling up to the car scene and seeing my son's car after his accident, all I could say was, God, I thank you that it passed over him. Seeing my mama bounce back from sepsis, which is an infection in her blood, and hearing the doctor say, we don't know what medicine to give her. We got three we can try. The only problem is whichever one we pick, we won't know for another three days if it work or not, and by then it may be too late. So we have to touch hands, agree, and pray, and in three days pray the medicine work, and my mama still here, get passed over I'm preaching to six of y'all. We may not have the same reason, but all of us got a reason to tell God thank you. Matter of fact, you ought to take one of your hands and just wave it over your neighbor's head and tell him that's the sound of hell missing you, whoosh. That's the sound of pain missing you, whoosh. Tell him you could have lost it last year, but it passed over you. Darkness covers the earth. And at noon, darkness fell across the whole land. So from noon to three o'clock, it got me tripping because we got an eclipse coming on the eighth. We got an eclipse coming on the eighth and I began to research things that's happening in cities that is passing over and all of the stuff that it means. I'm paying attention to the signs and seeing evil rears ugly head and seeing stuff happen. I'm seeing kings fall. I'm seeing all of this stuff happening and I'm like, ooh, we might just be in this hour. <laughs> Yeah, we might be in this hour right here where darkness covers the earth. But here's what I love about Jesus. As soon as darkness covers the earth, Jesus lets out a cry. Eli, Eli, <clears throat> Lama, <clears throat> Sabathini. Now, I said it cute, but if you look at the screen, the scripture says Jesus called out with a loud, but Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabathini. What does that mean, Pastor Mike? God. My God, why, New King James Version, has thou forsaken me? NLT Version, why has thou abandoned me? And here's where I'm supposed to knock Jesus for not having faith. But anybody who served God long enough and lived life long enough will admit to the fact that you have been through some stuff in your life where you may not have said it out loud, but in your heart you was asking God, my God, why you leave me hanging? 
See, your neighbor thought they was the only person going through it right there. But you sitting in here like you in the witness protection program. I wish I had five folk who care less what anybody think about you. And just jump up and say, Pastor, you talking to me now. I done been through some stuff this year and in the past 10 years. Where in my heart, I was like, God, why? And don't make this super spiritual. All my parents give me a what what. Can you imagine every time my son Miles would cry, I would run to his room. He would never call my name. If I heard him cry, I would run. If I heard him cry, I would run. If I heard him cry, I would run. But the times we were trying to get him off the bottle, the times we were trying to teach him to sleep in his own bed, he would be in his room crying. I would be in my room about to have a nervous breakdown because all I got to do is walk a couple steps and get to his room but the father knew if I kept rescuing him out of this he would never able be, be able to be who God called him to be and some of y'all are feeling rejected right now because what do I do when I pray just like everybody else but it hurt me what do I do when I stood in that $20 line and I sold my seed but it didn't nothing happen what do I do when I've been going to church, being faithful, trying to keep myself, being who God called me to be, and the meanest folk get blessed before me? Yeah, don't sit in here like you ain't never looked at somebody post something on social media and you thought to yourself, now God, what you doing now? I know for a fact they're not even going to help nobody. They're not going to bless nobody. They ain't going to look out for nobody. I'm the main one looking out for my family, my cousins, and all my friends. And you can't bless me. You can sit in here and be fake all you want to. But seven of us, the reason you got so much bitterness in your heart is because you ain't been able to find a safe place to say, God, you tripping. But I came to speak to somebody just because you question his ways. Don't mean you question any. And throughout the text, I see where people question God. David said, God, why are you hiding from me? God, why are you hiding from me? Jesus says, my God. Do you see how personal it is? My God. They worship him. My God. My God. Why hast thou forsaken? Here's the word that messed me up. Seven of y'all would have shouted over my God. Some of y'all get excited over forsaken. Here's the word that messed me up, me. You, you don't see where I'm going with this, no. Have you ever had somebody do wrong to you and you said to yourself, I get you being mean to them, but how you gonna have an attitude with me? No, 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 you, you should be mad at them. Did none of them help you? Did none of them do nothing for you? I'm the one who made sure you had it when did nobody else have it and you got the nerve how you sitting there like I ain't telling your whole story to do this to me? How you do this to me? How you do this to me? I done had moments when stuff went left in my life and I got, I got, I got immature. I would say, God, now I'm saving all these people. I'm preaching all over the world. I'm singing all this music. And how you let this happen to me? And God's sitting there like sitting in it. Yeah. Never forget when I'm at the bankruptcy office two blocks over and I had to file bankruptcy and I was about to lose everything and I'm sitting in there and they call you up in front of everybody and they talk to you like you ain't nothing. Tell us what you got. This how much you're going to pay a month. And people looking at me and it's probably eight years ago and I got a big old church but I ain't got nothing because I never really cared about offerings and salaries and all that. So I'm losing all this stuff and I'm sitting there looking around the room getting proud like, God, how you let this happen? Hmm. To me, if ain't nobody rocking with you, oh, y'all don't like me, I'm rocking with you. If ain't nobody praising you, I'm praising you. If ain't nobody been faithful, I've been faithful. Jesus on the cross, he's stretching. It's all cute when we sing it. They hung them high. They stretched them. It's cute because you singing it. Did you know Eli, Eli, Lama Sabathani is the manifestation of a prophecy from Psalms 22 and 1? 
When God said, when Jesus says in Matthew, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, he is fulfilling the prophecy from Psalms chapter 22, verse 1. Psalms translates to mean songs. Did you hear what I just said? Psalms is the book of songs. So whenever you read the book of Psalms, you should be singing it. Which is why at the end of most scriptures, they say amen, but at the end of most of the Psalms, they say salah. That is a musical term. So when he says, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, he just ain't shouting. He's singing. And ain't but seven of y'all who know how to worship, ain't it? Michael. Anybody can sing when you come out of it. Anybody can sing before it happens. But it's only seven of y'all who can worship while you're still in the middle of it. That's why if you ever see me with my hands lifted in church, don't put no circle around me. Don't rub me in my back. You don't know what I'm trying to praise my way out of. Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabathani, God, bro, God, why has thou forsaken? This is the word that messed me up. Me. And it's not in the Bible, but in my movie, it would have went something like this. God would have said, Jesus said, why you do this to me? And Jesus would have looked at God and said, you was with me when I fed the 5,000. You was with me when I got Lazarus out the grave. You was with me when I gave Bartimaeus his sight. But all of a sudden, now that I'm dying for you, when I was doing miracles for you, you was rocking with me. When I had everybody singing all praises to God, you was rocking with me. But now that I'm getting crucified, you going to turn your back on me? And God probably looked back at him, this is my movie, and said, when you fed the 5,000, you look divine. When you heal the sick, you look divine. When you raise Lazarus from the de dead, you look divine. But for the first time in your life, you look dirty. Jesus looks back at God and says, what you mean I look dirty? The stuff I got on me ain't even my dirt. Into the hands, I commit my spirit. And the word abandon derives and means to let go of one's hand. In other words, Jesus says, my whole life we've been walking in hand, in step. And for the first time, Michael, you let my hand go. Ooh. Then Jesus released his spirit. Now, all of that was my introduction. All of that was my introduction. Here's my Easter message right here. Because in verse 51, I see something that I've never heard a preacher preach in all my years of coming to church. All right? Never heard it. Verse 51, at that moment, Michael, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two, help me God, from top to bottom, all right? I, I don't have time, I gotta get you out of here. That's the veil was torn. What's the veil, PMJ? In the temple in biblical days, you had the outer court, you had the inner court, you had the holies of holy. The outer court, let's say, would be the lobby. The inner court would be the sanctuary, but the holy of holies would be a behind this veil that only the priest or the preacher could go back there. What would you have to do? This is good. You would have to come into the inner court, tell the priest what you was going through. Then you had to let the priest go into the holies of holies. And and talk to God on your behalf my only problem with that is how do I know you actually talking to God for me but God says when I died I ripped Michael the veil which means you don't need nobody to go to God for you you can go to God for yourself I thank God for Pastor Mike but I don't need Pastor Mike to talk to God for me. I need my pastor to touch and agree, but I got enough anointing to go to God on my own. Hear me? He says, watch this, watch this. When he gave up his spirit, watch this, the veil was ripped. The earth shook. The rock split. Stay there. You, you, you missed it. The veil was split. Where's the veil at the church? So the people at church felt it. People at home felt the shake. The people who were present saw the rock. But here's what I've never heard nobody preach. Because I was taught that the only person who got up was Jesus. I was taught every Easter that he got up. But I see something in Matthew, and it's only in Matthew that I don't see nowhere else. Verse 52 says, and the tomb opened. 
Y'all missed it. So when he gave up the ghost, and when Jesus died, look at verse 52, the moment he died, the veil ripped, the ground shook, the rock split, verse 52, and the tomb opened. The bodies, look at this, of many godly men and women, y'all slow, who had died, were raised from the dead. This is what's crazy, and people don't have a clue that the only reason they got up is because you, I'm preaching to seven of y'all already, it says godly men and women, watch this, got up. So my issue that I have now is not the fact that they got up. My issue is that most scholars argue that they walked around the cemetery until Jesus was resurrected. Jesus. They walk around the cemetery until Jesus is resurrected. Let me paint the picture. He dies. They get up, but they don't leave. Watch this. Because there's nothing for me to get you up. You do need to come out. And what I'm trying to speak over your life this year is that not only are you going to get up, this is going to be the year you, you come out. Not only are you coming up out of it, but this is going to be the year you come out of it. Yes, how many times have you bounced back but stayed stuck? This is going to be the year, Michael, you come out. And so imagine you walk by a cemetery and you just see people walking. Do you assume they're there to view a body? <laughs> or do it hit you, I'm looking at people that done bounce back. Your neighbor would have had a Holy Ghost conniption if they knew all the stuff you bounced back from. I'm not preaching to everybody. I wish I had a hundred folk who done bounce back, who can just jump up and shout, but I'm coming out this year. I'm coming out of debt. I'm coming out of anxiety. I'm coming out of low self-esteem. You ought to shout, I'm coming out. Hear me. So let me free you. Let me free you. Why? Here's what my question is, Dad. Why does he shout, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? Think about this. The scripture says, with a loud voice, he shouted. Can I free you? What if Golgotha is located right next to the tomb? When you look at the geography where Jesus being crucified is located close to the tombs, his holler wasn't just for him. Jesus. His holler, Michael, wasn't just for him. He knew when I gave up this last shout, everything that's down has to get up. Anybody can shout for a house and anybody can shout for a car. Anybody can shout for money. But I wonder who's tired of seeing people in your family down and people you love down. I'm giving you 17 seconds. Release your shout. Till your family come out. Till your family shifts. You ought to shout. And they put him in a borrowed tomb. This is critical. I need you to catch this. Hear me. I'm done, but I, I need you to catch this. That's just, that's all right. I receive that. Y'all don't realize who she need to come out. I dare you to say the name out loud. You want God to bless right now. I dare you to shout your auntie's name and your child's name. I dare you to type every name that you ready to see come out of something. I wish I had a thousand worshipers who would just jump up and shout, God, do it for my family. Do it for my circle. Do it for my friends.
Can I free you? Can I free you? If I had time, I would have read the next verse. Because the scripture says, once Jesus is resurrected, this is good, boys. Once Jesus is resurrected, the people who was raised from the dead who were godly went back to their family. Y'all slow, but you're worth waiting on. They went back to their family. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Can you imagine what would have happened had I heard a knock at the door and somebody would have said, it's daddy. And they opened the door and daddy's standing there with his hands lifted. The scripture don't tell me what they said, so I'm going to use my own imagination. Daddy, we had your funeral. You've been dead now a long time. What happened? I believe daddy would have said, I heard something. Jesus. Hear me. And Jesus gets out the tomb and he goes to his disciples. And the disciples are sitting in the room. Watch this, watch this. But they won't open the door because they're on the run and they're afraid they may be killed. Help me, God. So the scripture says Jesus walks through the door. This is for seven of y'all who've been hurt, who've been wounded, and you don't put walls up. And people keep telling you, in order for God to love you, you're going to have to let your guard down. No, in order for people to love you, you're going to have to let your guard down. God walks through guards. Am I preaching to anybody? And one of the 12 named Thomas, nicknamed twin, he was missing. When he walked back in the door, they like, you ain't going to believe this. Jesus came back. Have you ever asked yourself why they sealed his tomb? It's in the Bible. They thought that the disciples would come kidnap his body and make it look like he got up. So that's why they put a stone over it and they sealed it shut. The angel rolls the stone away. Earthquake happens. Angel rolls the stone away. They come looking for Jesus. He says, he ain't here. Preach, Mike. He ain't here. That's why seven people starting arguments with you because they tried to find you where you were. And since they can't find where you used to be, they try to argue with you to bring you back to where you used to be. But seven of y'all got to tell people who you looking for ain't here no more. I got out too. And Thomas tripping. Now, now look at your pastor. Look at, look at your pastor. I want you to think critical with me. We call Thomas doubting Thomas based off of this one scripture. He gets a bad name because he does what all of us do. They tell him, Jesus came back. And Thomas says, nah, y'all playing a joke on me. He came back and Thomas says, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds. And there's somebody in this room right now who's tripping Somebody in this room right now who's tripping because you keep telling God, God, I'm trying to believe, but help my unbelief. All my teenagers, listen to me, listen to me, because I want to make sure you leave with something today. He says, I won't leave until I see his hands. Every teenager, can you just look at your hands? Jump on your feet with me all over the room, if you don't mind. Can you stand with me? Look at your hands, every teenager. Look at your hands. I want you to remember what I'm going to say right here. Your hands represents productivity. Your hands, look at your hands, they represent productivity. All my grown people in the room, you ought to receive this. I speak over your life, this is going to be the year you produce something. You should have shouted, I received that. Keys. So they nail him in his hands. Keys, right? 
they nail them in his hands, which represents he freed your productivity. I speak you're going to produce this year. Look at me, all my athletes, don't step on a football field, a basketball court, nothing without looking at your hands and saying, Lord, help me produce. Every creative, don't come up with nothing until you look at your hands and say, Lord, help me produce. Every entrepreneur, don't release another product till you look at your hands and say, Lord, bless me to produce. They nail his hands. Truthfully speaking, they don't put a nail in his hand. Had they put a nail in his hand, his skin would have ripped him, he would have failed. Truth be told, they nailed the socket of his wrist. It's almost like a key. That if they put the nail in the right place, it locks your arms. You see nails. I see keys. Right, so I want to lock in your productivity. Then they nail both feet. They didn't nail both feet, both hands. No, they don't nail both feet like this. They place the feet above each other and they nail his feet. All my teenagers, I, I want y'all to leave with something. Your hands represent what? Productivity. All right, look at your feet. Your feet represent stability. I'm gonna speak this and you can shout I receive it. I speak stability over your life. Here it is, financial stability, emotional stability, relational stability. They gotta sit tight. Stability. You're not gonna be all over the place this year. You're not gonna be coming and going. You're not gonna be able to be pulled here and pulled there. I speak stability. Some of you are great people. You do so much for other people. But financially, you just don't have it for yourself. I speak stability. I wish you would receive that right there. Emotional, mental, financial, relational. Watch this. Then they put a crown of thorns on his head. Leslie, they put a crown of thorns on his head. This is critical because this breaks the curse. This, this breaks the curse. Why does it break the curse, PMJ? Because when man sins against God in Genesis, God says, verse 18, Genesis 3, 17, and, and to man he says, since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree, whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, look at what the scripture says, the ground will be cursed because of you. And all your life, you will struggle, scratch for a living from it. It will grow, verse 18, it's on the screen, thorns. It says it will grow thorns. Watch this. The curse, because man sinned against God, one of the curses was the ground would make him have to work for everything. Listen to the language. By the sweat of his brow, he's going to have to work and no matter how hard he works, the ground will only produce thorns. They put a crown of thorns on his head. The thorns pierce his scalp, causes blood to run down his face. You missed it. It's impossible for blood to run down my face and not touch my brow. So when they placed the crown of thorns on his head, it reversed the curse. So hands, productivity, feet, stability, crown of thorns, I speak over your life, you won't lose your mind. I prophesy that the curse has been reversed. I speak God's giving you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. You ought to shout, I receive all that. So hear your pastor when I say this. Hands, what does that mean, church? You're going to produce something. You're going to produce something this year. Feet. Stability. People not going to walk in and out your life. Stable friends. A stable circle. 
Let me free you. This ain't stability. Because if you leave here with the wrong mindset, you're not going to catch it. This ain't stability. Do I have any nurses in here? Any doctors? If your patient do this, what that mean? They just flatlined. This ain't stability. Ups. Did you catch that? So when you go down, don't get depressed. Say, God, I'm down here, but I know eventually. Stability means I go through it, but it don't change. Crown of thorns, every curse spoken over your family, I call it reverse right now. I thank God for my father. My father will be one of the first McClure men to not be an alcoholic. He broke that curse. I'm going to continue breaking that curse. Can I ask you a question? What you finna break off your family? Oh, you should have got excited about that. What you going to break off your family? If ain't nobody in the family got no money, I'm finna break that. If ain't nobody marriage lasting, I'm finna break that. I speak, I'm breaking every curse. Number four. Every resurrection weekend, I stand here and I say this. They pierce him in the side. So much so that the sack that surrounded his heart burst. And the Bible says that blood and water began to flow. The last sign to know that you are anointed, the last sign to know that you're gifted, is when you have the ability to remain standing with a broken heart. You may be in this room right now and hear me when I say this real soft man falling in love with Jesus the best thing I've ever done hear me and I'm begging you don't let TikTok convince you that this ain't the right thing don't let three friends who talk to two people misinterpret something and make you think Jesus ain't for you just because somebody misuses it don't mean it's not, still not powerful. Falling in love with Jesus saved my life. You may be here today. And in your heart, you're saying, man, I need to get back right with God. Let me free you. If you don't come to church another Sunday this year, I'm going to still love you. We ain't to beat you up, church. We to pick you up, church. I want you to know every Sunday, whether you stream or come to church, somebody going to be standing right here telling you how much God loves you. But since I got you here, how powerful would it be? My brother, my sister, if you was able to say, you know what, God, today, I'm just asking you for a fresh start. If you don't mind, can you stand to your feet all over the room right here? I'm going to get you out of here. I want to make the devil mad today. I want to make the devil mad today. If you can, grab somebody's hand next to you, if you can. If you can, don't be shy. Grab somebody's hand next to you. Even if you got to stretch out just a little, grab somebody. Jesus went to Calvary, save like you and me, that's love. Jesus. Every head bow, every eye closed. I want to be very clear. Maybe you here and you need to get saved today. That's between you and God. When you get to heaven, they're not going to ask you what church you go to. They're not going to ask you who your pastor. Let me free you. God don't have no grandchildren. He's not going to ask you who your mama is. God only got sons and daughters. If you're in this room and, and if you walked out this door today, real soft man, you walked out this door today and Pastor Mike, if I got hit by a bus, I'm not sure where I would wake up. Just squeeze that neighbor's hand. It's real simple. I need to get saved. Number two, maybe you're already saved. But PMJ, I've been slipping, man. 
I ain't been praying like I should, not been faithful like I should, not watching the word like I should. I come when I can, but life kind of happens. But in my heart, I love God. I'm ready to start over. I'm so grateful God didn't write my story in pen. He wrote it in pencil. Good thing is he can erase all them bad days and give me a fresh start. If that's you, just squeeze your neighbor's hand right there. It's real simple. Maybe you're here number three and you need a good church home. I didn't say a perfect church. I didn't say a perfect pastor. I didn't say a perfect member. You just need a place where you feel God and you feel like you can be fed. Squeeze your neighbor's hand right there. Now do me a favor, every head bow, every eye closed. If you had somebody squeeze your hand, can you lift that hand right there? Let them know that they're not by themselves. Just lift that hand. Right where you are, you can repeat after me. Say, Lord, come into my heart. Make me over again. I confess with my mouth. I believe with my heart that you were raised from the grave, raised from the dead, with all power in your hand. Right now, God, I'm saved. God, commit my heart. I commit my mind. I commit my gift. I commit my talent. God, create in me a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor. In Jesus' name, can you give God the best praise you got right there? Come on, Rock City. Hallelujah. Listen to me before you move. Listen to your pastor. I want to be very honest with you about something. You just gave your life to Jesus. <laughs> That's right. Now let me be very real with you because here's what we don't do a good job in church of. You just gave your life to Jesus, but your name just hit the devil's desk. Yeah. Hell just said, wait, something different this time. I think they actually meant it this time. Hear me when I say this. I want you to know you're not by yourself. On my prayer team, lift your hand right there. I want you to know every Thursday, somebody going to be praying for you. That's why when I ask you to text HOME to 28950, they get a list and Elder Tristan and his team pray over every name. They lift up every name. They call. Who done got a call from us before? Every person to say welcome to the family. We want you to know you're not by yourself. You want to know why? Because the devil is mad because he just lost another one. Now let me give you some good news. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Were you blessed today, Rock City? Come on, one more time, clap your hands. All my fellas, give me a roo roo. All my fellas, give me a roo roo. I want to say this, man. Every man, do me a favor. Take your phone out. I got something special for you. Lady has a lot planned for our women's ministry, some stuff that they got planned and community groups and all that. But for my men, we're getting ready to do something called Rockefellers. It's a, watch, watch this. Watch, watch this. I hope you, I hope you catch this. I hope you, males are born. Men are made. You missed what I just said. Males are born. It takes men to make other men. I'm getting ready to do something that's exclusive for the men called Rockefellers. And I want you to be a part of that. I want you to text Rockefellers to 28950. That's R-O-C-K-A-F-E-L-L-A-S. Rockefellers to 28950. If that's too much for you, just text home and we'll send that message out. I'm believing by faith, and I need somebody to get excited when I say this. God's going to give us a man church where men going to be on fire about God. I'm going to put my faith on it. We're going to fill this room one day with men who are on fire for Jesus. Can I get a what, what from somebody? Listen, I love you so much. I thank you for worshiping with us today from all over the world. No, I can't wait to meet you. Can't wait to see you. I speak a very short but powerful prayer of your life, and it's this, Lord, your will, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. It's in Jesus' name we pray.
And everybody said, amen. I love y'all. I'll see y'all Sunday. We are. God bless you. That was incredible. Jesus, listen, oh we gosh. just witnessed thousands Whoa. of people commit and recommit their that's, lives. That's our why. Yeah, that is our why. It. Pastor Mike talks about it all the time. What is our why? Our why is soul, seeing lives come to Christ, seeing lives be changed. And I don't know about you, but I was tremendously blessed. If you're watching online, uh, there was well over 5,000 people watching just online at one time. If this service, the worship, the word bless you, go ahead and put a fire emoji in the comments. Yes, God. Go ahead and put the bicep up. It was a strong Resurrection Sunday service. It was absolutely powerful. I was blessed. Man, listen, I'm still at a loss for words. And the reality of it is, Pastor James, you don't want to hear a word like that and not get seed in yeah, the ground. Yeah, absolutely. You want to be able to mark this day, mark this moment yes. as the day that you said yes again, yeah. <laughs> as the day that you got up again, yes. as the day that the things that were dormant in your life are now resurrected. There it is. So you can text I rock and the amount to 28950. Yep. That's our rock and the amount to 28950. We oftentimes say that here at Rock City, you don't give to a church, but you, you give, give through, through a church. church. Absolutely. You see the impact um, that Rock City is having, not just in Birmingham, Alabama, but all over the all world. Over the uh, world. And we couldn't do it without your faithfulness uh, and your support and giving and staying, you know, committed to what God has called us all to do. So I love it. And, I, and you know, today you saw, you spoke of it, thousands of people giving yeah. their life to Christ, rededicating their life to Christ. You say you may be watching, all you got to do is text HOME to 28950. That's HOME to 28950. We would love to have you as a part of the Rock City family where God just continues to blow our mind. Man, well, speaking of blowing our minds, we know that we just recently wrapped up our group week. Yes. And so you can take city groups to 28950. There's a form that's available. We want you to tell us about it. Yep. We want to hear the testimony. We want to hear about all of the life-changing work that is happening yes. and how it's impacting people all over the world. Yes, and, and if you're in the room when you're walking out, you may want to stop by. We got the merch alert. So for a donation, <laughs> yeah, New merch the, alert. the devil thought he had me, but I got away I shirts, got away. as well as the notebook for your notes and journaling uh, that's at the merch store so the merch alert listen I don't know about you but this I got away weekend has been amazing from I yesterday with the volunteers uh, and hey. families having a great time and of course today two look at God day. two services at the Bible well that's history right it's the first time we did two services here right at the same day you know what I think so it, it may be, be. I don't, yeah. I just, as far as I well, know we're making history again we're <laughs> we making keep, new history we keep making history so thank you all for just streaming in, not just those of you who are in the room, but for you have streamed all over the world. We That's thank right. you. We love you. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Mike Jr., lady, and the first family, we appreciate you. We love you. Uh, and we can't wait to do this again. We're going to see you in the morning. In the morning. For Devo Energy. Energy on Facebook and YouTube. Listen, y'all. I'm, I'm about to go probably find me a place somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. So we will see you next time. We love you. We love you. God bless All you. Right. Have, a, have an amazing resurrection yes, rest of God. your Sunday because he got up and I got up too. We love you. God bless you. Peace. Peace.